Welcome inside the WOSN studios, joined as always by Mark Shine. I'm Matt Finkel, and it's the final Mark's Madness of the boys basketball regular right. season. Girls basketball, we're already into the tournament play, and we'll get to some results a little later on in the show. But, Mark, let's get started with the boys and yep. pick out a couple of interesting results that we want to talk about as we get ready for the postseason coming up. And let's start with LCC and Salina. Good game at LCC, and LCC never trailed in the game and, and picked up a quality win. A couple of things I think that are really interesting when you look at how that game played out because LCC played most of the game without Trey Cobbs. Had a shoulder injury, not sure to the extent of that. Josh Dixon stepped up with 16 big points and just proved what we've talked about all year long. The guard play in our area right now is really, really good. Josh Dixon steps in for Trey Cobbs. They don't miss a beat and play against a good uh, slime team and defeat them. A lot of strong guards in yep. the area. Ottawa Glandorf defeated Division I Perrysburg, and, and they have a good guard as well in Jordan Verhoff. They do. And, of course, if you look now at what Ottawa Glandorf has done recently, Matt, they're, they're four and oh in their last four basketball games, and in that time period they're giving up just 44.5 points per game. So certainly what they're trying to do defensively is very good right now, and they're looking to make a stand for the tournament by playing defense. And staying in the Western Buckeye League, Wapak falls to Coldwater by two after beating Van Wert on Friday night. So these teams, we know it's an all WBL district. These teams are going to face each other again, and, and some of them are, are playing really well at this point. They really are. Of course, they've lost uh, Morgan, you know, with that knee injury that he had. And they started out the season eight and six, did Wapak Kaneta. They're three and four in their last seven games. And when you lose a player like that, maybe not necessarily the, the key component, the number one guy on your team, but it changes your rotations around. It makes you bring maybe a JV player up who doesn't have as much varsity experience. And you're trying to replace a guy and change everybody's roles a little bit. They're three and four, but Wapak, I think, is a dangerous team heading into the tournament because they play everybody tough. Yeah, Wapak will look to bounce back from that setback against Coldwater, but like you said, they could be a team to watch for in the tournament because they've been in so many tight games. Seems like every week Coach Selby's got his guys in a tight basketball game. You're never quite sure how they're going to come out with it, but they play everybody tough. Uh, Adam Henderson leads them in scoring. They're a balanced basketball team after that. I think they're a team that you can contend with in the tournament. How about Kalina? They defeated Continental to yep. claim the outright Putnam County League title. Yeah, 48-43, Continental couldn't get that third upset in a row as they had the previous two weeks in conference play. Once again, if you look at defense and how Coach Quarterkratz has taught that, in PCL play, Kaleida gave up 39.5 points per game. Again, there's seven opponents in PCL play. Part of this is what they do, of course, offensively. They're not going to run up and down the floor and try to score 100 points. They don't turn the basketball over very much. They play a slow and deliberate type pace. Makes it easier to have a good defensive average, but they're solid defensively as they are. They get a lot of scoring from Underfirth and Quarterkratz. They got some balanced guys after that. Good basketball team that Coach Quarterkratz has put together. Miller City also beats Grove 53-50 on Saturday, so that's good momentum for the top-seeded Wildcats as they get ready for the tournament as well. Yeah, they are. And, of course, that's a team that we look at as trying to score a lot of points. And, unfortunately, I saw them on a night against Ottoville when they didn't have one of their better offensive games. But Adam Neeson crew put a lot of points on the board. they got a lot of guys that can shoot threes. Uh, you know, they're going to try to do that in the tournament, of course, and we'll see if they're running some of these defensive-minded teams that can take them out of that particular scenario. To the BBC, Liberty Benton remains unbeaten in league play by beating Hopewell Loudon, and I don't know if this is something we saw coming from, from the Eagles. Well, then they, they have a new coach. They graduated a lot of guys from a year ago, so they weren't quite sure what we were going to get. Admittedly, I don't think this is a, the, as good a BVC as we've seen in some other years. There's some good teams at the top of the conference. They have a two-point win over Hopewell Loudon, and sometimes when you're playing for a conference championship, you just have to do that. You have to have a night when you're not playing at your best, when the other team is defensive-minded and get the scores are low, and it's, a, it's an upset-minded situation, and you find a way to pull one out, they were able to do it the other night. Now they're going to play PG for the league championship outright this week. Continuing around the area, Spencerville beat New Bremen on Monday night. Meanwhile, Crestview lost to Wayne Trace by 29 on Tuesday night, a game you saw here on WOSN as well. And what do we take away here? We know that Spencerville can still get the outright league right. title with a win at Lincoln View, but at Crestview and Columbus Grove also play Friday, and if Lincoln View gets the better of Spencerville, we're going to have a shared title. Well, first of all, let's don't count out Lincoln View because they're pretty good. Justice Dowdy can score. Adams can score down inside. They've got good balance on their perimeter, so don't count them out. But this is a Spencerville team, I think, since the middle of the year has kind of been dedicated to doing a lot of things correctly. They kind of share the scoring between six different players. You know, the other night when they, the game you're talking about, they had six players who, average, who scored between 8 and 13 points. So very well balanced, and they, it's tough to stop any one guy. And when they do, it seems like somebody else has a big night. Nurse might go off for 26, or Goki has a big night, or Corso has a big night. Somebody else comes through for them. So I think they kind of got things going with Spencerville right now. That will be an interesting concept when they play this week against a good Lincoln View team. Yeah, still a lot to be decided this Friday night, especially in the Northwest Conference. Some of the leagues already settled, but 
Northwest Conference will be a good one to watch out for. In the MAC, St. Henry held on against Fort Recovery. This game was close. Oh, it was. Uh, Fort Recovery, you know, they got that upset mode going. That's one of those you're thinking, though, this could be one of those similar situations we talked about with Liberty Benton. Can you find a way to win on a night when things aren't going particularly well for you? And that's what happened in this particular game. Uh, Pranger makes two big threes late. They get a rebound off a free throw. Mike Sell gets fouled. He makes one or two. They find a way to win the basketball game. Sometimes you just got to do that on a night when things aren't going well for you. It helps when Ryan Mikesell puts up 25 <laughs> points and grabs 18 rebounds as well. So that, yeah. that, that's a good winning formula. Uh, Mike Sell's a good player. We're going to talk about our top players of the year here coming up a little bit, and he's going to be one of them. He's special right now. Absolutely. Marion Local defeated Rushi as we continue through the MAC. And Marion Local Rushi was a game you called. We're going to take a look at a couple of plays from that game. But what was your biggest takeaway from the Flyers? Well, first of all, I was really impressed with how they went into a kind of a hostile environment and, and played that particular situation because Rushi was has 10 seniors. It's senior night. Everybody's kind of jacked up for that particular game. And it was going to be a big game anyway. And I think it just kind of added to it with being senior night. They played through foul trouble. Bruns and Kanapke were both in foul trouble. They played through that. They handled the basketball well, didn't turn it over very many times, made free throws late. I was impressed with Marine Local. Now, they gave up more points than I thought they would. It was a 71-66 game. I didn't think it would be that high of a scoring game if Marion Local would win. They did. They put 71 points on the board. A good preseason gap basketball game if you look at the regular season heading into tournament. Well, let's take a look at a couple of plays now. And before we get to that Marion Local game, we're going to show you some of the things that the Flyers did well. We're going to get started with Jackson Center and Fort Lormie. Another right. game you called. This game was on Friday night. And we're going to take a look at how some of the screen and rolls made a difference in this contest. Yeah, first of all, you got to feel a little bit bad for Fort Laramie. They come into this game, could have been a really big game between the second and third teams in that particular conference in the Shelby County Athletic League. Devin Braun, their 20-point a game score is home sick. Kind of took a little bit away from the basketball game. But we have a couple of plays to look at here. First of all, we're going to look at how we set up a screen and roll situation. Here's the high screen and roll. Throw it down inside, accept contact, and go to the rim and score. And as we look at it a second time, watch how the postman is done just exactly as he's supposed to. Here's the screen set right here, and as he rolls, he'll take his right shoulder and roll into the lane. You'd be surprised the number of players who turn the wrong way and the ball, they can't find the ball because it hits him in the back of the head. He turns over his right shoulder. Here's the catch. Hands are up. The one dribble power move and accepts contact and goes through the defender to score and get fouled. So here's another look on the other end of the floor. This time it'll be Jackson Center. Yeah, they're going to try to use an inside screen and post up in the lane as we're going to see right here. You see the player curls off the screen, comes right up through here, going to catch the ball here. Then the postman forms up inside. We go down inside with the pass. He's going to get the basketball in here. And you're thinking three seconds. Well, first of all, we don't call three seconds loud anymore. And once he catches the basketball, he can stay down here as long as he wants, as if he's making an effort to score. Here's the catch. And from right on now, the three-second rule doesn't apply. He can stay down there all day if he's making an effort to score the basketball, which he does. All right, good stuff. Now into that Marion Local Rushi game. It's Marion Local in the blue. And just check out the passing. Yeah, the Marion Local, of course, for years have been noted. This goes back to the Jack Albers, Keith Westrick days of how well they pass the basketball. This is what coaches call pur uh, purposeful movement, though. Watch the press offense. We used to say Marion Local could attack a press without dribbling the basketball. Here there's one bounce, uh, pass off the dribble, and you see the score. But the real key is how they execute this thing and how they get their cutters going through. Because the first cutter, once this pass is made right here, this cutter takes the defenders with him. And when he does that, it opens up the secondary cut through the middle. Right here, here comes our first pass, cross court, and watch this cutter coming right through the lane right here. Beats his man, and now we're off to the races. Here's the pass, the one dribble, bounce pass under the defender's arm. Kanapke flushes the dunk. We used to say Mary and Local probably practiced their press offense without having air in the basketball because they never had to dribble. At that time, just one dribble set the dunk up. Two good examples of of not putting the ball on the floor and yep. getting open looks. And in the first case, it was a three, that time a dunk. And well, it's, it's really fun to watch a team execute that well. Of course, Coach Guttermiller went through that particular program. Jack Alber started that back in the 70s. And Keith Westrick and, of course, Coach Guttermiller learned from those guys. And that's how they attack pressure. They're good at it. All right, it's time now. We want to know Mark's top yep. five. We got a first team and a second team on the boys. And, uh, of course, we haven't seen everybody this year. That's We've right. done our best to see as many players as we can, but I think Mark has uh, done a good job compiling a list of some very talented high school basketball players. Well, first of all, Matt, if I told you you could have Trey Smith, 
Jaden O'Neal, Carson Monger, Jay Starbyshire, and Ethan Linder. You say that's a pretty good basketball team. Without a doubt. Yeah, that's my honorable mention. Those guys, for whatever reason, couldn't crack the, the, the top tens. Let's go through our second team, our first team first. Which one do you want to do first? Let's do second team. And second team up. first. Okay. Second team in alphabetic order because I wasn't going to try to rank these guys. Austin Allmeyer from Elida. Noah Bramlage from Ottawa Glendorf, Trey Cobbs at Lima Central Catholic, Luke Kanapke at Marion Local, and Conan Lotzenheiser over at Crestview. Very good list. And what makes some of those guys such good players? Well, first of all, I think what, look at what Austin Allmeyer has done at Elida this year. I mean, you know, he's got a uh, start of the season hurt. His teammates have been in and out. They're young guys, and he's just been a leader all year long for them. Of course, Noah Bramlage, one of the top players in the, uh, the conference in the Western Buckeye League. Trey Cobbs, who's the leader, I think, for what he does from the point guard position over there uh, at Lima Central Catholic. Kanapke, we had to find somebody from Marion Local. It seems like it's a different guy every week, whether it's Ruthman or Bruns, whatever it might be. I went with Kanapke because I saw him live and had a good basketball game the other night, so I went with him. And then Lotzenheiser has just carried Crestview. So many of those guys graduated a year ago. Two key players are hurt now. He still scores around 20 or 25 a game. So I'm with Connor Watson, this is our fifth guy. Can't go wrong with any of that. Can't go course. wrong with that. Nope. All right, let's get your first team now. Okay, again, in alphabetic order. Kyle Arns from Versailles, Ryan Hoying at Salina, Ryan Mike Sell at St. Henry, Xavier Simpson at Lima Senior, and Dan Tells Walton from Lima Central Catholic. A very talented bunch. And a lot of them playing in college. That's Obviously, right. some are not even seniors yet, so we, we're assuming they will play in college. We don't know where they're headed just yet, but that group right there, you could put them against any uh, five in the state, <laughs> and I think we're going to have a pretty good chance. I think there's a whole lot of coaches would like to take those guys. Of course, Kyle Arns having that great year and going to Michigan State. Ryan Hoying, the leader of the pack down there, and a very good team that we see in Salina. Of course, they're going to go into the tournament on a pretty good roll. You know, the teams they've lost to are 55-7. and seven. Three losses for Salina this year. Their opponents are 55-7 and seven that they lost to. So they've lost to really good basketball teams. Then, of course, you can put up Ryan Mikesell, probably the best player, at least from on the winning team side, in the, uh, the MAC conference. I'll be interested to see whether he or Kyle Arns gets to be player of the year in that particular conference. Xavier Simpson, leader of that Spartan team. It does so many things for them, of course. And Dan Tez Walton. I went with him over Trey Cobbs because I think he does more for Lima Central Catholic than Trey Cobbs does, but two great players over there for Coach Kill. All right, I was assigned to do the same thing on the girls' side, and instead of doing a first team and a second team in honorable mention, I just picked 10 or 11 girls yep. that I really enjoyed watching play this year. And I'm going to get started right away with Lauren Bruns of Versailles. They have Carl Arns on the boys' side. Yep. Lauren Bruns having a tremendous season on the girls' side. you got to look at Maddie Dakin and Bath and what she's been able to do in her senior year with the Wild Kittens. Molly Glick of Arcadia, we don't talk about Arcadia too much because they're kind of on the fringe of our viewing area, but she's leading the BBC in scoring and rebounds, 22 and 11 per game, having a fantastic season. Liberty Benton's Katie Simon, she's going to Wright State next year and helped lead them to an undefeated year so far as they get ready into the postseason. And Rion Thompson for Lima Senior. Lima Senior unfortunately just lost mm -hmm. in their sectional game, so their season is over. But Rion, just a junior, she'll be back next year. Fantastic season. You ready for five more? Go to it. How about Lindsay Motika from Crestview? Another undefeated girls team. Talked about the two undefeated teams in the area, LB and Crestview. Lindsay Motika, a big part of that one. And how about Aaron Morrow of Van Wert, 1,000-point mm -hmm. scorer. Ali Toby, 36 against Parkway just uh, last week, also a 1,000-point scorer for, this, for the year. Emily Patton of USV averages 20 and 6 for a very good upper side of Valley team. And Alyssa Ellerbrock, she set the school record for Ottawa Glendorf earlier this month with 35 points. Just a lot of talented girls who know what they're doing on the hardwood. I had a chance to see a lot of those young ladies play. And if you were asking me, number one, all that pick, Bruns. I saw her play two basketball games, and she was just outstanding in both of them. Of course, we don't get to see them all play, Matt, as we talked about earlier, but she was really, really good the nights I saw She's her. really a game changer. Yes, and what is. was tough for me is she has a teammate, Krista Putoff, who's right. going to play at the University of Finley next year, who is just as much of a game changer. So you got to, we're excited about Versailles coming up in the tournament. A lot yep. of those teams we're looking at for possible deep tournament runs, and you can see why. They have just a lot of talent. You know, Matt, if we're going to finish this up, if I had to name a coach of the year this year, and that's a really tough thing to do, I'm going to go with Frank Kill over at Lima Central Catholic. Um, he graduated some players, lost some players, still had two really key players coming back. They don't have the option of playing in a league, so he has a bunch of games where just non-conference games. You don't have that league challenge every week. They still went 19-2. and two. They're going to go deep in the tournament. I thought Coach Kill has done a tremendous job with his team this year. He really has, and there's a handful of coaches that we can yeah. point to, and, and Frank Kill is, of course, as good a choice as any. Mark Spanis will continue on through the postseason. The girls' postseason yep. has already started. That Versailles 
The Versailles girls team is already into the district semis against Miami East. Listen, they won their sectional semi final game by 67 yeah and then they won their sectional finals by 43 so they're off to a good start this postseason some results from tuesday st mary's over shawnee salina defeated napoleon and is moving on after a win over against mark arcanum new bremen defeated spencerville and minster listen to this score 91 15 minster yeah. victory so nance sexualty has her girls playing they are really well saw right them now. play late in the season a regular season game against wapak they were good so it'll be fun to follow as the girls are already off and running. Boys will get started next week. Check back here with us. We'll have our analysis coming up. But before that, let's uh, run through our broadcast schedule for this weekend, the final weekend of the boys' regular season. And it gets started for you Friday at 1030. St. Henry versus Coldwater Boys, a good Mac matchup. Friday at 1044, following the sports report on WTLW. Crestview versus Columbus Grove Boys, potentially for second place in the mm -hmm. NWC, maybe for a share if Lincoln View defeats Spencerville. Saturday at 9, Elida versus Salina boys, final league contest for both of those teams. And then Sunday at 9, Elida versus LCC, a very good local matchup, which can be seen on Sunday evening at 9 p.m. on the West Ohio Sports Network. So looking forward to it all. Thanks again yep. for doing what you do, Mark, so well. And thank you for joining us on Mark's Madness. We'll see you right back here next week.